Now for some very wonderful, very close-up magic. most magical things that we encounter in our everyday life is a mirror. The reflections that we see in a mirror look real, but they're actually a perfect illusion. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could take the reflections in the mirror and make them real? Well, let's try with this 50 cent piece. The first thing I do, Wendy, is I throw the 50 cent piece right under the glass like that. Then I try to catch the reflection of the coin in the mirror. Ah, I think I've got it. Now for the magic. The 50 cent piece is under the glass where I can't possibly touch it. I'm going to try to, try to make the 50 cent piece an illusion. Watch. Now! And we have a reflection trapped in the mirror. I'm going to try to make that real. Look. Now watch the reflection of the 50 cent piece slowly appear in the mirror. Now watch as the reflection becomes real. Voila. Now, we have two. We have two heads up 50 cent pieces. Watch what happens if I turn over one of the coins. The reflection naturally turns over, and so does the other coin. Now, watch two coins slowly melt into one. Just one coin. Again, the reflection will become real. Thank you. Now, if you're looking, you see one coin, right? There are two coins, three coins. Now you see four coins. Look, the illusion has again become a perfect reality. <laughs> Welcome to Central Park. This has always been a magical place, especially on Sundays, because throughout the park, you can see lots of wonderful magicians performing their close-up illusions for the crowds. Now I'd like to show you two of my favorite small illusions. And I need two people from the audience to come up and help me. There's two little people right out. Can you come up here, please? Yeah, little girl, little guy. Hi there. There we go. What's your name? This is Edna. And what's your name? David. David. Will you come and sit right there, David? And Edna, you come and sit right down there and watch the amazing illusions. And I'd like to tell you that, like all my magic I do on TV, there's absolutely no trick photography. Everything you see at home, the audience is seeing right here in the theater. Now, the first illusion I'd like to show you is an illusion with an ordinary, everyday object found, I'm sure, in every household throughout the world. This, as I'm sure you know, Edna and David, is a Rubik's Cube. As you can see, there are nine little colored squares on each side, and the colored squares are completely mixed up. 
Also, the sides of the cube move every which direction like this. And as you can see, the colors just get more and more mixed up. That is unless you're a genius or you spend hours and hours trying to solve the puzzle. And then you can get a solid color on each side. Personally, I have to solve the puzzle by magic. It's going to happen instantly and visibly. Watch. Now! Well, thank you! Thank you! Now, that was a very modern illusion. I'd like to show you now one of the oldest illusions in magic. It's called the cups and balls. Now, this was done many, many centuries ago, and the magicians always use two or three cups and two or three balls. I've simplified it a little bit for you, Edna, and for you, David. I'm only going to use one little copper cup and one green ball. Now, I'm going to explain what's going to happen. Then you can help part and participate, OK? Now, I take the little green ball, Edna and then David, I put it inside the cup, and I shake it up like that, and I take it and put it inside of my pocket. Okay, and you're supposed to guess whether the ball is under the cup or in my pocket. Have you got that? Okay, let's begin. You got, okay, the ball goes right down inside of the cup. I shake it up like this, and I take it and I put it down inside of my pocket. Now, Edna, do you think the ball is in my pocket or under the cup? Under the cup. Under the cup. Are you sure you don't want to change your mind? Yes, I do. Where do you think now? And you, you have to watch a little closer, Edna, okay? Let's try something a little bit easier now. The ball is going to penetrate right through the handkerchief, leaving no hole. That's what makes it magical. I put the ball right on top of the handkerchief, and we cover it with the cup to make it a little bit more mysterious. Watch, it's going to pass right through. Look, the ball went right down inside of the... Wait a minute. Look, the little ball got scared and went home. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This time, the ball is going to pass into the glass, through the cup, and through the handkerchief. Now, I'm going to take the ball, David, and put it down inside of my pocket. And it's going to pass into the cup, either visibly or invisibly. How would you like to see it go? Yes. Invisibly, through the air. Did you see it go? Well, you should have, because look, there it is, right down inside of the glass. Now this time, this time, Edna, I'm going to do the same thing, a little bit faster. It goes down inside of my pocket, and it's going to go invisibly to the cup. Did you see it go? Well, you should have, because look. It's a lemon, but that's not what really amazes me. What floors me is how this onion gets in here. <laughs> Especially since they don't even fit inside the cup. <laughs> Thank you. Now, just prior to the show, Doug went into the audience and selected two volunteers at random to assist Doug in the next uh, series of illusions. Now, we've never met these people before, which is a way of saying they are not ringers. They will vouch for that. Thank you, Glenn. Tonight, I'd like to take everyone on a journey into a magical reality, a reality where a magician's dreams come true. And at the end of the show, I'm going to try to fulfill one of my wildest dreams, walking through a solid brick wall. Yeah. You could have dreamed, you know, being a cowboy or a fireman like the rest of us. At <laughs> least that would be in the realm of possibility, Doug. Well, I don't blame you for being skeptical. If I'd met you 10 years ago and you told me you were gonna sell 20 million records, I would have been skeptical too, but I guess we just have different dreams. Well, we sure do, but I know one thing, that I cannot walk through a brick wall. Don't be too sure. And now after making a motorcycle weigh, what, 700 pounds 700 disappeared? Pounds. Wow. Doug thought it would be nice to do some of the smaller stuff as opposed to the large stuff because people like to see small dreams fulfilled too. Doug <laughs> Henning, you're amazing. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Doug, what's your name? Francie, how are you? What's your name? Steve. Francie and Steve, good. Thank you for coming up to assist me here tonight. I'd like to take you all back to the time when I first started out in magic. I was just a kid and all I had to work with was my empty hands and a few ordinary objects. And I used to perform for my friends sitting around the table. And I'd like you to be my friend sitting around the table tonight, okay? Thank you. Now, in order to do magic, you must develop certain skills with your hands. It's like learning to play the guitar. I have a little saying I kind of keep in my mind. It's that the difficult must become habit, the habit easy, and the easy beautiful. And then it really looks like magic. 
But first, you have to practice your exercises. My, I'd like to show you a few exercises that I used to do when I was younger and still do, as a matter of fact. Last year, I did one of the largest illusions in magic. I made a live elephant vanish. And I can't get any larger than that, so this year I decided to do the smallest illusion in magic. An illusion with a little tiny cigarette paper. Watch closely. I'd like the two of you to assist me in a very wonderful illusion with a pack of 52 playing cards. Here are the cards. I'm going to have each one of you select a card, just like this. We'll have it returned to the pack, and I'll mix up the cards, and we'll find your card in a very mysterious way. Would you like to pull out a card, please? Just reach out there and grab one, look at it, and memorize it. Would you take a card, please, and look at your card and memorize it? Now, it's Steve, right? Yes. Yeah, would you also take a card for the audience? Just pull it out and lay it flat on the table in front of me. Fine. It's very important you remember your cards, okay? Now I'm going to have each card return to the pack. The first card, it's your card, right? Mm -hmm. You know what it is? Yeah. We'll put your card somewhere near the bottom of the pack. That's right about there. Now it's your card, okay? And we'll put your card right down near the side, like that. And the last card is the audience's card. That one right there. And we'll put that one right down there near the bottom, okay? Everybody memorizes their cards and we're all cool. Now I'm going to mix up the cards and we'll find your card in a, in a most unusual way. I think you'll agree. Now, first of all, let's use the audience's card. I'd like everyone at home just to concentrate on your card. You're, did you see the one I held up for the audience? Yes. What was the name of it? Ten of Spades. The Ten of Spades. Watch the Ten of Spades, because people think that the mind actually has a power to make physical objects move. And if this were the case, it would look something like this. Watch. <laughs> and the audience's card was the Ten of Spades. <laughs> Steve, let's try your card now. Do you remember what it is? Jack of Diamonds. The Jack of Diamonds. Steve's card is a Jack of Diamonds. Steve, hold up your fingers and wiggle them a little bit. Let's see if we can make the Jack of Diamonds work. A little bit harder, wiggle, Steve. Yes, yes. You're a very fast wiggler there. It's moving quickly. <laughs> there we go. And look, your card is the Jack of Diamonds. <laughs> I'm going to make your card more difficult to find than anyone else. And to show you that nothing is connected to the pack at all, we're going to cover it with this clear plexiglass dome, OK? What is the name of your card? The Seven of Diamonds. The Seven of Diamonds. Watch. Seven of diamonds. You can take the cards, put them in your pocket, and keep them as a souvenir, okay? Thank you very much. It's very easy to destroy something like a cigarette paper. You don't feel too bad because it's very inexpensive, but to destroy something like a beautiful silk handkerchief is a little bit 
more risky. So I'm going to try to do an illusion with a silk handkerchief, an illusion of destruction with this handkerchief. Before I do that, we have to find the exact center of the handkerchief. And that exact center is right about there. Now, I'd like you to take the scissors, if you would, please, and cut, excuse me, not cut, create the illusion of cutting, because you wouldn't want to damage this beautiful handkerchief. Create the illusion of cutting right through the center of that handkerchief. Yes, just create the perfect illusion of cutting right through the handkerchief. Thank you. Put the scissors down now, and I, I think you've created the perfect illusion. Do you see two halves of a handkerchief? Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good illusion because I even see that too. But, you know, the senses can't be trusted. They can be distorted by all kinds of things and they, they don't really give us a true picture of reality. For instance, do you know what? We haven't actually cut this handkerchief at all. You don't believe me? Well, watch. <laughs> Well, I'm really getting warmed up now, folks, so we're going to go for broke here. I have to borrow a gold ring. Do you have a gold ring that I could borrow? Steve, hold your hand right out on the mat, and I'm going to dump into it six Canadian silver dollars. We only need three for the first part of the experiment, so I'll put the rest of them right inside the little bag. Three silver dollars and a gold ring. Now, the gold ring actually has the ability to attract silver, okay? I'd like you to keep your eye on the gold ring in this hand and the three silver dollars in this hand. You'll hear them being attracted. You won't see it. Are you ready? Listen. Did you hear that? Look, one of the coins went right over and attracted to the ring. Now I'm gonna try this with another coin. Did you hear that? The second coin went right, right over. And the last one is the most difficult of all. We got it. Three coins attracted by the gold ring. Now I'm gonna do this once more using three coins at once. This is the most difficult. In this hand goes the ring and three silver dollars, right? In this hand goes three silver dollars. Steve, do you remember what's in that hand? Three silver dollars. That's right. Do you remember what's in the other hand? Three silver dollars in my ring. That's right. Now watch, my hands never approach each other. I just wiggle my thumbs. And it's done. <laughs>